Hello there and welcome to this special edition of Brian Lomax Movie Talk. In this episode I want to talk about something that really has been a bit of a bugbear for me over the past couple of years, something that well, that I've tuned into a little bit um, as a Christian myself. Um, this this video is, is going to be about Christian movies and the way in which they're presented, the way in which they present their ideologies. And I really want to ask the question, why are Christian movies so bad? Now please understand, as I've already said, I am a Christian. I love Jesus, that's that's who I worship, um, and I won't try and force that down anyone's throat, but that's just me laying my cards on the table, that's who I am. But the thing is, when I watch a Christian movie, I often find myself feeling embarrassed. I would never choose to sit with someone who I know is not a believer and, and watch them. And if I was sat with someone who is a believer, I'd I'd be looking at them thinking, you know what, this this is pretty bad. And I say this because last year, 2014, uh, my worst film of the year was a film called God's Not Dead. Um, that that was the the number one spot in my top ten worst films of the year. However, there was another film, a film called Calvary, starring Brendan Gleeson. That film was in my top. 10 movies of the year, the, the films I thought were the best movies um, and to be honest since making that list and having watched a lot of the films on that list again if I made that list now the film would be even higher than it actually was when I made that list that's how good I thought it was so on the one hand we have a, a film about Christianity made by Christians um, and it's terrible and then we have a film on the other hand that um, okay maybe some of the people involved have a faith I don't know but on, on the whole it, it was a, it was a, it's what you consider a secular release uh, shall we say but which dealt with Christian themes um, yet that was a tremendous film so what is the difference between these two films why is it that a great film about Christianity can be made outside of Christian circles and a film within Christian circles just doesn't work. One thing that stands out to me is, is, is the style of storytelling. Now, Jesus himself told parables. He's famous for telling parables. I think there's, there's a reason for this, and it's the structure of a parable does not give you everything. It doesn't hand you everything on a platter you have to work for it. When, when Jesus in the Bible told parables, he would often leave people confused because um, they'd have to work out what he meant from the parable. Um, there's, a, there's always a meaning in there to be drawn out. And because you have to work for it, because these people had to work to figure out what Jesus meant, they earned it. They, they, the meaning they gathered from it was, was their own in a, in a, in a sense um, because they had to work for it. And that, for me, is the fundamental difference between these two films that I'm talking about. On one hand, Cal Calvary is a parable, very much so. It's, it's, a, it's a film about this priest who is threatened, his life is threatened, he's told that within, within a week, um, this, 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 the guy who threatens him says he, he will kill him um, uh, by the end of the week um, and the, the, the priest doesn't know who it is because it's done in a confessional box and and then we have this parable really of what's what's this priest going to do how is he going to deal with this information it brings up certain themes such as forgiveness um, and uh, primarily forgiveness to be honest in that film whereas if you look at God's Not Dead that is clearly a Christian film made by Christians it's the complete opposite of a parable in the sense that it does not make you work at all to try and glean what information it is that the filmmakers are trying to put across to you. No, it does the opposite. It lays everything out on a platter. It tells you. And that for me is really destructive in any film because that's what separates art from propaganda and propaganda tells you how it is um, it, in the viewpoint of the person who's who's telling it that is um, and it, it's an open book you know exactly where the people are coming from um, and it's just 
yeah, that's, that's all I can say really. It's, it's propaganda and that's the fundamental difference. Whereas with Calvary, um, we have a character who is actually quite flawed. There, there are times when he loses it during the film. There are times when he swears and he does things that you wouldn't expect of a priest or that you, you might look down on if you saw in the behaviour of a priest. But the fact that he's a flawed character makes him real and it draws you into that character a lot more. And the fact that he has flaws means that you can identify with him. Um, he isn't perfect and his Christian faith does not make him perfect. Whereas when we look at God's Not Dead, we have a lot of atheist characters in that film who are painted out to be, um, well, just either idiots or aggressive or, or whatever other negative kind of connotation that you can think of. Whereas the Christian characters have a certain sense of nobility about them. They're, they're very kind, they're caring, they're forgiving. They're, they're all of these great wonderful traits that we'd like to see in human beings. And that's just not the reality of the situation. I am a Christian and I get angry. I, I curse at people. I I judge people and I'm human. My faith doesn't make me perfect. One more thing I will say is that when you look at the character journeys of um, the, the, the two main characters in, the, in these films, the conflict that arises um, in, in Calvary, it comes obviously from, from this death threat. Now, that conflict is carried all the way through to the end of the film in the sense that we don't know what the the priest the, what Brendan Gleeson character is gonna do until he does it and he doesn't do it until the end of the film he's wrestling with his emotions he's wrestling with what he's gonna do what he should do should he run or should he stay any kind of intelligent person would say run get the heck out of there you know why are you staying if, if you know someone's gonna kill you but that obviously carries certain ramifications like he'll never get to deal with this with this with this man with this person I mean ultimately his his actions in the film and I'm sorry if you haven't seen the film um, this is a spoiler so if, if, if you want to see the film and don't want it spoiling turn off now but the priest dies at the end that's it he he meets up with this man he goes through it and he he allows himself to be sacrificed but what comes out of that is this beautiful gift of forgiveness and in, in many ways redemption because his his daughter, um, based on a conversation he has with her just, just prior to this event, um, he, he talks about forgiveness and, he sa and he's essentially saying, look, no, no matter what happens to me, because I know what's about to happen to me, you have to forgive this guy because it's the only way that's going to move on. And that conflict, that decision that he has to make, isn't made, it's not fulfilled, so to speak, until the climax of the film. Now, if you go back to God's Not Dead, the difference there is, what is the conflict for this main character? Well, the conflict is, should I defend God in the classroom? This, 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 this man is, has put God on trial, should I defend him? And that, that's really it, that's the conflict. So once he makes the decision to go into the classroom and defends God, God, defend God's position, sorry, um, the conflict is gone. So like, e even if the rest of that classroom stands up and tells him to get out, tells him to shut up, which they're not going to do because we're being spoon-fed this information. They become this audience which just buys up everything that he says. But even if they didn't, if they told him to go and they booed him off stage, essentially, it wouldn't matter because the conflict that his character is going through has already been dealt with. He's overcome the conflict by getting in that classroom and defending God. So the rest of the film from then on is basically just a preaching session, which goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning, which is the difference between art and the difference uh, and, and propaganda. Sorry. Um, and, and that for me is the primary reason why most Christian films that I've seen. I'm not all, I have seen a few Christian films that I think do actually have some value and are quite well made, but on the whole, Christian films 
suffer from the fact that they are simply propaganda and propaganda in any form is ugly. So there you go, I've, I've got that off my chest, um, a few issues raised there maybe um, and I'm sorry if uh, you're a fan of Christian movies, um, please understand, like I say I'm a Christian, I don't say these things to offend you, um, but as a film fan, as someone who reads film, who appreciates film, who appreciates the art art of film, the artistic merit to it, the way that films are constructed, these are just things that I just wanted to talk about and, and just really get off my chest. So whatever your opinion, please don't feel like you can't state it below. If you disagree with me, that's that's completely fine. It really is. Um, if you agree with me, again, um, I, I, if you are gonna comment below, please be respectful of other people's opinions, um, but please don't feel like you can't comment um, if you have an opinion that is different from mine or anyone else's. Um, but yeah, uh, there you go, that's, that's my video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, hope you got something out of it. Um, thank you for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already and if, 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 you, if you like this video, uh, show some love by uh, clicking the thumbs up button. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching.